Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Some might think this is going to be a slow episode because we're starting off with tortoises adopted by Mitch Telson, former president of Petco. Even though tortoises can live to be over 100 years old, we'll see that they're frisky at any age. After that, we'll be visiting the Santa Barbara Humane Society where executive director Carrie Burns will be talking about perfect cat adoptions. Then it's off to Atlas Rehabilitation for Canines where Karen Atlas is going to share how she helped my pit bull Mikey recover from a horrible injury. Finally, the pet psychic Laura Stinchfield is going to talk with Eli, the miracle donkey. So grab a bowl of treats for you and your pet and join us as we go into the animal zone. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Aww. Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. So Mitch, here we are in your tortoise family. How many tortoises have you got? Well, there's a total of 15 of them separated into seven separate enclosures. And they're separated because, quite frankly, some don't get along with others. I mean, these seem to all be very happy with one another, and they seem to be really attracted to your shoes. Why is that? Well, they love color, and uh, I picked uh, something that's got a little red in it today, and they, they very much enjoy their red color. But they're not um, going to bite you, huh? Well, they might bite, but they're not going to hurt. <laughs> they're not going to hurt through the shoe. I'll be doing a little dancing around here. Tell me about how you started to adopt turtles and tortoises. I started, actually, I came across country. I had a, a, a turtle in my lap, a box turtle that uh, passed away on the trip. And then when I got to California, I was just 10 years old, um, I discovered the California desert tortoise, which at that time was just all over. Everybody had done the taking them off the desert before it became illegal to do that. And then they didn't realize that they could keep them, so they gave them to me. And, and so you've been adopting ever since? I've been adopting ever since, although this is a different species. These are not the California tortoises. These are African sulcata tortoises native of sub-Saharan Africa. It seems like they're pretty gentle. They move slowly. Is there a lot of maintenance to keep a tortoise? Very little, very little maintenance, fortunately, uh, because as you can see, they're various sizes. These are the small ones. The big males are over 200 pounds. So th the maintenance would be someone coming onto the property to maintain a meaning of that. H how long do they live? They live, a, a healthy tortoise will live over 100. Wow, so you've really got, once you've committed to a tortoise as an adopted pet, that's a commitment for most of your life, isn't it? That's a commitment for not only my life, but for my kids' life, my grandkids' <laughs> life, and probably my great-grandchildren as well. Do you have any uh, offsprings? Do they give birth here? They'll breed uh, virtually every afternoon, and three times a year the uh, females will drop um, eggs 
between 12 and 24 eggs at a time. And if we incubated them, which we do not, uh, they would hatch out and we would have, I have five females, so we would have somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 little baby sulcata tortoises every year. We don't do that. This is not, and I emphasize not, this is not an endangered species. This is a very prolific breeder in captivity. There are probably 10,000 sulcata tortoises available for adoption right now. And if people want to adopt a tortoise, where would they go? Uh, they probably the best way is just to go on the internet and search for uh, sulcata tortoise adoption. There are a number of organizations. Uh, I belong to the uh, uh, California Tortoise and Turtle uh, Club here in Santa Barbara, but there's societies all over the place. Um, and there are, there are lots of tortoises available. You just need to have space for them. What would you say would be a good amount of space for one tortoise? Uh, well, if you're gonna supplement their diet, you can get away with probably about a thousand feet per thousand square feet per tortoise. If you're not gonna supplement them, uh, theoretically, they need a half an acre per tortoise. Mm -hmm. And speaking of their diet, what, what is their diet? They're pure vegetarians, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> they eat uh, they eat grass, they eat weeds, uh, uh, leaves, some hibiscus plants, rose petals, uh, not grocery store items, not uh, uh, oleanders, uh, leaves, some figs, fig, and a little bit of fruit also. Mm -hmm. they, they enjoy that. Any medical issues? Uh, knock on wood, I have not had any medical issues with them, uh, any serious amount. This little one that's, uh, that's nibbling at our feet, uh, Nevada, when she was younger, she had a blockage, uh, and we had to give her a, uh, a supplement called lactulose, which is a, uh, a laxative, which flushed her out. And it took uh, two of us, even though she was sick, to get her head out, her mouth open, and to get the lactulose in her. And we did that for a couple months. But she's fine now, and she's uh, quadrupled in size. I mean, they seem so peaceful, and they're, they don't make a lot of noise, do they? They don't. They're very quiet pets. They don't bark. They don't meow. Their only uh, noise that you hear them is uh, uh, during mating season, which is virtually every afternoon about 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, when you have a tortoise uh, that's available for adoption, uh, these agencies that have them, are they looking for homes? Do they go through an adoption procedure and qualify people? Absolutely. Uh, people, it, it needs to be a person or a family that's going to be responsible for the animal. And they need to make a commitment, although it's difficult to say for the rest of their life like you would for a dog or a cat. But you need to make provisions for them so that the animal will be taken care of forever. But it sounds like it's something that will bring a lot of joy to some people. It, it certainly does. It brings a lot of joy to me. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. You're very it's welcome. Quite a pleasure to see all your fine four-legged friends here. <laughs> of a different type. <laughs> all righty, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back, right here on Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Catherine Raymock with K-Light Radio, and I am a proud adopted dog owner, twice around. I can't imagine my life without Zoe, and uh, she brings so much joy to our life, and I would highly recommend adopting to anybody. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. And we're here at the Santa Barbara Humane Society with Carrie Burns, Executive Director, 
And Carrie, come on, chase those little I know, cat right? treats. Huh? Where's the cats? They all go hide when you come in to play with them. Goodness. We're in their, in their special cat adoption area, and uh, there are so many beautiful little kittens and cats. There's even a special needs cat next to us. And uh, tell, us about, tell us about her. This is actually TLC. I'm not sure if you can see her. I'm going to lean on you, Arthur. No, please. So this is TLC, and TLC came to us from another shelter, and she actually has a birth deformity, so she can't use one of her back legs. So she kind of hobbles around, and then she had to have a little mass removed also from her head. So we've been taking all the medical care that we can of her, help her out with the resources, um, but she is just a wonderful, wonderful cat. She just likes to lay around, and she has what's called the, her little cone, because we don't want her to scratch where she had the little remove the the mole removed from the top of her head and open that up again. So they wear these just to protect themselves so they don't open up any stitches and it's usually on for about 10 days and then they can come off. And you do all, a lot of the veterinarian care right here at the Humane Society, don't you? We do. We have a wonderful veterinary clinic. We do spays and neuters, we do vaccinations, um, and you know, so but we encourage people to have a relationship with their veterinarian also in the community because we're not a full service clinic. Mm -hmm. But if you need your vaccinations or a spay and neuter, come on down to our clinic. It's wonderful and we'll take care of your pet for you. Now imagine in the springtime uh, when all the kittens start coming in, oh, uh, then you've got a lot of residents that are looking for their homes, right? Absolutely. You know, this is one statistic that just blows me away and I always tell the kids, get out your calculator. If you have one pair of breeding cats and they keep having babies and they keep having babies over seven years, they'll have 420,000 cats. Wow. Yeah. That's why if we spay and neuter, that means obviously they can't have any more little kittens. So that means that we don't have to, you know, take in as many animals in a shelter. And we, you know, we don't want to have homeless animals in our community. We want every animal to have a home. So the less animals that we have entering a shelter, the better off everybody is in the community and the better off the animals are. Now, if you have lots of little baby kittens, this is a lot of work to look after. Look at. How do you guys handle them? Right, the little baby kittens are so hard, especially if they, they don't have a mother around anymore and they have to be bottle fed. And it's usually every two hours. I mean, can you imagine disrupting your sleep? Yes, every two hours, like having a regular child um, that's very young. So it's called bottle babies, and the little ones, they go into foster homes. So we have volunteers, like Paul is one of our volunteers and one of our many wonderful volunteers that works here. And we have a lot of foster parents who will actually take the kittens home and take care of them. We give them all their medications, everything they need to get them large enough and strong enough to be able to come in the shelter and be adopted. Why? But imagine, they must get so attached to these little kittens. It's hard. I, mean, I melt the minute I see a kitten. Well. Most people have heard the term foster failure. Uh -huh. That's where it comes from because they get so attached to the little fosters that they're caring for. It is difficult to give it up, but a lot of them know when we educate them that when you're a foster parent, this is a temporary assistance that we need and the animals need before they can go into their forever home. So you know we make them very aware of what they're getting into, but it's never easy because these animals just love us unconditionally. Now you have a, a very good saying here, uh, it's adopt, don't shop. That's right, adopt, don't shop. A lot of people will go out and spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars for an animal. And the reality is that their 10% of purebreds are actually in shelters. And there's rescue groups out there. So if you wanna look up a purebred shepherd, look up shepherd rescue, or purebred maybe shih tzu, look up shih tzu rescue. There's just about every type of animal you can think about adopting, even all types of cats, you know, whatever their breed is. Um, there's always one to be found somewhere in a shelter or in a rescue group. So we encourage everyone that if you're considering bringing a new pet into your home, definitely go to a shelter and adopt your next pet. So kittens are just the cutest thing in the world. But kittens do grow up just like puppies do grow up. So even though they're cute now, they doesn't mean they're always going to stay small and just nice and calm like this. Cats will grow up and cats will want to climb and scratch and play. So make sure you, when you do bring a new family member in, that you know it's a lifelong commitment and that these guys will grow up and they'll live to be anywhere from 15 to 18, sometimes 21 years. So you have to be ready for that. That's fantastic. Well, adopt, don't shop, and don't forget to come down to the Santa Barbara Humane Society because they have some great new friends that are going to be your forever buddies. We do, and maybe they'll come out and play with the little toys next time or else you're going to have to play with it. I, I don't know what's going on. We'll be right back. 
Hi, my name is Dr. Christina Sisk. I'm the veterinarian at the Santa Barbara Humane Society and you are watching Animal Zone. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. You know, sometimes when you adopt an animal, they have some injuries. In the case of Mikey, this wonderful pit bull, which we adopted a few years back, he arrived with some bad injuries in his legs, and uh, we took him to Atlas Rehabilitation for Canines, and they did amazing things. He got up on all four paws, and now he is doing really well. But we're gonna show you exactly what happens at Atlas, so come along with us. So here we are at Atlas Rehabilitation for Canines with the owner, Karen Atlas. And Karen, you've known Mikey since he was a tiny puppy. I have, I have. When we first adopted uh, Mikey, he had a horrible injury. It was a, he had been hit by a car or a truck mm -hmm. and his paws were all damaged, his arms were damaged, and he had a terrible limp. His vet said we should come to Atlas and have him rehabilitated through various protocols that they have here. And uh, you pulled some magic out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, um, Mikey did great in rehab. Um, so we first saw Mikey after he had some surgery to put his elbow back together after he was hit by the car. And then he subsequently needed another surgery to get some of that hardware removed. And then we saw him shortly after that. And that's when we were able to help speed up the healing through different um, modalities that we use here in rehabilitation. We used um, cold laser therapy to help de reduce um, pain and inflammation. It helps to speed up healing as well. We used um, ultrasound and um, I did a lot of manual therapy on him to help get his range of motion back faster. And then of course we used the underwater treadmill um, to help him get on his paws faster because he, um, he could then walk with, the, um, with um, less pressure on his elbow at the time. We also were able to swim him earlier so that he could gain his range of motion and strength back too. And um, so that got him, got him back to a better quality of life quicker. And, and you've had a lot of these kinds of successes with other animals that have come in almost paralyzed. I have, um, yeah. So is this a new technology? Is this, when did this uh, develop? Well, physical therapy has been around in humans for many, many decades. Um, but it has just, um, I would say in the last 10 years or so, gotten um, more into the animal realm. And um, I'm a human physical therapist that's licensed as a human physical therapist. And then I um, was uh, went to further schooling to get certified in canine rehabilitation. And we use a lot of the same modalities and techniques, but um, in different ways to accommodate for the different problems dogs have and for the different postures. They're on all four legs and we're on two. And so we have to, um, I needed to learn more about biomechanics and um, and uh, what the differences were between dogs and humans. But a lot of the modalities and the um, thought process and treatment plans um, are really parallel to um, that of human physical therapy. I mean, he seemed to just love coming here. In fact, today he was just so excited to come and see you. Uh, and so there's a definite bond. He knows whatever you've been doing for him has really helped him. Um, I've never seen a dog on an underwater treadmill. In fact, I didn't even know they had them. Uh, how does that work? What does it actually do? Is it creating uh, resistance for him? Well, it. It depends on how fast you're going. It can cause, it can create um, resistance or assistance. So if you go at really slow speeds, then um, it gives, the, you know, the, the buoyancy that the water creates um, takes more pressure off the joints so that they can um, walk more comfortably. And, um, but if you're walking at faster speeds, then you have the resistance of the water as well. So depending on what, we're goals, what our goals are in therapy, we, um, we change the way we utilize the underwater treadmill. 
We use um, different water heights, depending on if we want to load the joints more, then we have the water lower. And if we want to unload the joints or take pressure off the joints, then we bring the water up more. Um, and then we can even um, raise it all the way up and put them into a swim mode, which is great for, it was great for Mikey because um, we were able to um, work on his strength and range of motion for his front limbs because dogs are so front wheel drive, they, they do uh, really well with um, swimming for front limb injuries. Uh -huh. I noticed uh, when we were doing, I guess it was laser therapy, mm -hmm. uh, laser light, mm -hmm. uh, that it, it was kind of relaxing, almost like a massage for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what does that laser light do? Well, the um, laser uses a really specific wavelength of light to um, help change the way the cells respond. And so it actually doesn't do anything, um, you know, we call it cold laser, but it's not cold or warm. It is, it um, changes the way the cells react and the reaction of the cells are um, to turn over faster. So it helps to speed up healing. Other properties of the um, laser is to help decrease inflammation and helps with um, pain control as well. So um, we can hopefully take less um, pharmaceutical medications orally. What's that, bud? He's going, I'm ready to I know. have a treat. Let's hit the road. Yeah. yeah. Let's go in the water, huh? Well, this is so great to, to see you and see Mikey so happy again. And, uh, and it's great to know that if you have an animal that does have injuries, there is hope and you can really bring that animal back through incredible rehabilitation techniques that people like Karen have created. So uh, appreciate you coming on Animal Thank Zone. You. And, uh, Thank you for having me. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after these words. This is my dog, Polo. We adopted her eight years ago from Monument Valley. She has a brother that came along too. He, he lives in Utah. We rescued actually three dogs. It's the best thing in the world. There are lots of dogs everywhere that need homes. Easy to do and it will change your life. I'd say she's a rescue dog, but mostly I think she rescued me. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your entertainment, The Pet Psychic, as we enter the Animal Zone. Well, now we're here at uh, Wendy McCaw's property, who is Eli's guardian, Eli the donkey, and the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, is with us. And we're so glad you guys are all here today and uh, can't believe that you can psychically communicate with a donkey. Is that possible? Have you ever done of it before? Of course it's possible. Yeah, I have done it before. What, what, what kind of language do donkeys speak to you in? What happens is that my mind transfers their thoughts, their images in their head, and their feelings into words. And so, of course, donkeys have lots of feelings and yeah. lots of images. And now this donkey has a long history. You got this donkey how many years ago? 1995. All right. So he's a, he's a well-seasoned, would you say he's a senior donkey yet? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, they live, they're fairly long-lived. Um, I think I've heard that they can live until they're 50. So. Wow. Middle-aged. It's middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, tell me about what you're feeling with Eli. I mean. Well, let me see. I'll ask him, you know, what he's thinking, if there's anything that he wants to tell you guys. Is there anything that you've been wondering about him or anything in particular you want to ask him? I'd kind of like to know what his state of mind is. You know, is he happy? Is he, you know? Okay. What, how does he feel about, you know, his situation and like on a daily basis? Yeah, kind of overall. What's yeah. his kind of? What's did, his kind of? Did you hear Eli? Mind? What do you think about that? 
Um, he's happy, but he would like more interaction. Like what kind of interaction? They groomed him and pet him and loved him every day. He would like that. All the animals love it when Wendy does her walks. It's the best time of the day. Oh, he says that you have such a gentle heart and that as soon as you see the animals, you get even more peaceful. Oh, is that true? That is true. You want kids to visit you? They used to come to around the fence. <laughs> That's true. You really like that? Oh, you didn't like your friend next door because he kicked you? But so, can you get like along like in the future, do you think? Like maybe he was just asserting his dominance? He was mean kicking, was he? There's a long story behind this. Um, but before we get into that, can, yeah. can you ask him about his time in the desert because he was considered to be an orphan? Oh. And um, I'd like to know a little bit more about... Before he came to Before you. he came to before he was rounded up because they're all rounded up, you know, off the BLM, oh, off wow. of the federal lands. Yeah. I'd just like to know do what his you, early life was like. Do you like. remember that? Motorcycles rounded you up like dirt bikes. It was so scary. Sorry, I'm like starting to cry. She, he said his mom tripped and fell and um, he tried to like even nurse from her and he couldn't. I think she passed away. Oh, geez. But you had other friends that took care of you? Oh, that's good. Like other donkeys? They took care of you? There were horses there too? When you got here, you felt better. That's good. And nobody will ever hurt you here. That's right. Sometimes it gets lonely. He can't be with Watson again. We, we know that. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the problem that he had when he became paralyzed. Maybe you can tell me how he felt during the time that he was injured and up at Alamo Pantano. Oh, okay, when he was at Alamo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you were at Alamo, when you were at the hospital? They told you that they wanted you to get better. You had to find it with inside of yourself. You didn't think you could do it, like get up. Oh, one of the ladies says you needed to do you need to do this, and then he just started to try. Oh, he said that they when he started walking, they did exercises with his legs. Yeah. <laughs> well, Laura, thank you so much, and Wendy, thanks for having us over, and Eli, thank you for talking to us all. And we're gonna take a break, and we'll see you after these words on Animal Zone. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors, and you're watching Animal Zone. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! Who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Honey puppies. Honey puppies. Uh, Mommy, Daddy, that's really it. That's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate. They understand what home is all about. Weren't those some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. For all time, so glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. And 
I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie wanna be, yo. Can't out of mind. Friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.